Hey guys, it's Melbourne 7 here, and today I'm bringing you my match thoughts on the Manchester United versus Crystal Palace game. Now, we made that a lot harder than what it should have been, but in all honesty, apart from one chance that Crystal Palace had in the first half where they should have scored, we never really looked as though we were going to concede. Uh, we didn't really look too threatening in attack, though, uh, I've got to admit. A lot of players' performances were pretty poor, especially Anan Yanezai. This is the time he needs to be loaned out, okay? He's not first team quality, and Mata kind of showed that he should be playing there, even if it's on the wing, because he came on on the wing later on in the game, instead of Yanazai. And to be honest, we don't need wingers. We need to revert back to the 4-1-2-1-2 diamond formation. Di Maria plays so much better when he's a centre mid, and he's got all the space to go out to the right, but he can also come in. And... You know, that just makes it so much better. Or left, wherever you, you know, want to put him. Um, and then use Herrera as well. Like, Herrera was benched, and he must have been feeling so shit this game. Watching our midfielders playing back passes, playing sideways passes, etc. So, we started the game off. We had David De Gea in there. We had Valencia, McNair, Blind, um, who I thought it would be Carrick, and I thought Blind would retain his holding uh, defensive position. But no, he, play he was played as a centre-back. Luke Shaw, who was my man of the match, he was absolutely fantastic. Obviously, he got the man of the match as well, I think. And then we had uh, Carrick in the holding DM spot. I'm not sure what the hell we went for. I think it was like a 4-5-1. We had Di Maria on the right. We had Yanazai on the left with Fellaini and Rooney in cams, kind of uh, pushed towards centre mid as well. And then RVP stranded up front again. And it, it just looked pathetic. Apart from two minutes in where Yanazai nearly scored, he hit it just over the bar. A couple of other shots. Carrick had a shot, but it was blocked. It looked as though it could trouble the keeper. And then... Um, Di Maria had a shot, Van Persie had a shot, you know, they were mostly getting deflected, Palace were obviously sitting back, absorbing the pressure, and our centre-backs, um, because they both were originally centre-mids, um, when they started football, Blind and um, McNair were pushing forward, and Palace were just giving them the space, and uh, it looked as though they were trying to, you know, get the centre-backs away so Palace could get the ball and initiate a quick counter-attack, and there was one moment in the first half where... It looked as though um, McNair had, uh, was going for the ball, but then Blinder told him to uh, stop. So the ball bounced in between all two, uh, both of them because I think it was a little bit of a mix-up. This is our 11th centre-back partnership in 11 games, by the way, due to injuries. And yeah, it comes to Fraser Campbell, and he tries to dink it over De Gea, and that's the right thing to do, but he put too much power on it, and it's over. And to be honest, that was the only time Palace looked as though they were going to score. Very, very solid in defence, but... Lacking an attack, they didn't really produce much. And considering our, you know, makeshift back four is so poor, I didn't expect to keep a clean sheet. I wanted to, but that is a huge positive, keeping a clean sheet. We also had three different uh, centre-back partnerships this game alone. So we start off with Blind and McNair, as I said. Then, uh, I think it was um, Blind who got pushed up and Carrick got put, down, uh, put in the... Uh, centre back, sorry, uh, alongside McNair, and then McNair got subbed off for Fletcher, so we were playing Carrick and Fletcher as centre backs. Mada got subbed on for Yanazai. Um, it was Yanazai, wasn't it? Yes, and I think um, someone else, Wilson, got subbed off for Di Maria. Now, Van Persie was very lucky to stay on the pitch um, for 90 minutes. He didn't really do much. There was a time he was on the right wing. And he, he goes to turn, like, watch this on Match of the Day. He goes to turn, turns again, turns again, turns again. He turns about eight times. He's got, like, four opportunities to cross, and we get a corner from it. I, I really don't understand what Van Persie was doing there. But, yeah, Mata comes on, instant impact, like, five minutes in. Oh, we also had a, a corner. Di Maria, for some reason, um, he's great at crosses, but he can't take set pieces. Um, free kick sometimes, but corners, he's useless. But anyway, Rooney, I think it was his second corner, uh, Rooney's second corner, and about our eighth. And he crosses it in, and Fellaini gets his head on it, and it's uh, blocked off the line on pa uh, by Palace. But anyway, Mata's brought on five minutes after. Mata <laughs> scores, takes the ball, it's about 25 yards out, and shoots. To be honest, um, Spironi should save it. But he tips it into his own net and um, it was on target anyway, so Juan Mata gets a goal. Not long after that, Wayne Rooney's bursting through and uh, we managed to actually slip a ball past Palace's defence. It was uh, a miracle, but Van Persie shoots and the defender slides another block. It's ridiculous. Comes out of Mata who leathers it straight against the left post. Comes out of RVP and he blasts it so far over. As soon as Falcao's back... RVP can't play there. Like, even if we've got two strikers, I'd much prefer to see Rooney there, even though his defensive capabilities, you know, may 
obviously justifying playing uh, kind of further back because he did make an important clearance late on in the game uh, to stop a uh, Chris Ballas counter attack. Or Wilson, like he showed so much promise this game, he didn't really get any opportunities because uh, by that time we're kind of trying to uh, sit out the game, trying to lock it down, take the one nil. But uh, he made some great runs, and RVP only did one great thing in my opinion, and that was a fake run. Uh, to take away a defender so Rooney could have a shot that went way wide in the end. So we were very, very poor, but we did deserve the win, in my opinion. We had so many shots that were blocked. Palace looked very, very solid. And at least it's another free uh, free kick. It's another clean sheet. It's another three points on the board. So heading into the international break, um, obviously Arsenal play tomorrow, I think. So I don't know what their score is going to be. But currently we are sixth. I think we're two points or one point behind Arsenal, who've got a game in hand. Yeah, we're one point behind Arsenal. West Ham are two points ahead of us. And, uh, yeah, we play Arsenal after the international break. So if Arsenal draw, that puts them two points ahead of us. And then if we beat them, we leapfrog them. But if Arsenal do win and then we beat Arsenal, we'll only be one point behind them, which is brilliant. So... Basically, we need to win against Arsenal. Hopefully, a couple of centre-backs return. Hopefully, um, Falcao is actually fit and Raphael as well. We need him. Valencia was pretty solid, but against Arsenal, especially with Alexis Sanchez, I don't know if Wenger would choose to put him on the wing. Uh, even if he doesn't, then since he'll probably play centrally, they've got Walcott, Chamberlain, etc. We've got pace, and Valencia has pace, but he's not very good at positioning. Rafael is so much better at that, and he also has pace. So yeah, I've let this drag on for a lot longer than what I thought, but yeah, let me know if you watched it, what your thoughts on the match were. Uh, if you watched Match of the Day, let me know. But it's a pretty boring game, I'm not going to lie, but we did deserve the three points, and we got them, and it's our third clean sheet of the season.